This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 91. Your business failed, but did you really try or did you just give up? By Steve Chu of mywifequitherjob.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host and narrator here at Optimal Startup Daily. I am here every single day, including weekends and holidays, bringing you some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship in audio form. And I thank you so much for joining me today as we head down the home stretch of 2020. And I wanna give a big thanks to Email Octopus, founded in 2014. They give you the tools you need for email marketing, including customizable signup forms, autoresponders, and list segmentation with great customer support whenever you need it from real humans. Right now, Email Octopus is offering Optimal Startup Daily listeners 50% off of their first month. Visit emailoctopus.com OSD or quote code OSD50 at signup. For 50% off your first month of email marketing, visit emailoctopus.com slash OSD or quote code OSD50 at sign up. For now, let's get right to our post for today as we optimize your life. Your business failed, but did you really try or did you just give up? By Steve Chu of mywifequitherjob.com. Oh yeah, I tried being an entrepreneur a few years back, but it was just too hard. I tried the whole blogging thing, but couldn't get it off the ground. I tried selling online, but every product I could think of had too much competition. I don't know why, but lately I've become increasingly sensitive to people complaining about how things are just too difficult. Whenever I hear statements like the one I just read, I can't help but think to myself, how hard did you really try? How much time and effort did you actually spend? Did you just give up after encountering the first obstacle? Call me a skeptic, but I honestly believe that 90% of the time, people complain about their failures and give up because they don't really give things a chance. Case in point, quote, Oh yeah, I tried being an entrepreneur a few years back, but it never went anywhere. End quote. When I challenged the acquaintance of mine who made this statement, he showed me his website and claimed that he spent over six months working on his online store but never sold a single thing. Wow, a whole six months, huh? When I went to look at his website, I was appalled. Not only did his online store look like complete and utter but it appeared as though he spent little or no effort writing his product copy or marketing his store. To make matters worse, his product photos were all pixelated and distorted. It was no wonder that he never sold a single thing. What's strange is that I always thought of this person as an intelligent individual. Was this garbage of a website really the result of his best efforts? Quote, I tried the whole blogging thing, but couldn't get it off the ground, end quote. Newbie bloggers are notorious for giving up, so I naturally asked to see the so-called blog that my friend could not get off the ground. Turns out that he only had like 10 blog entries and he was using the default WordPress theme. Not only that, but his about and contact page still had the WordPress defaults. Given the state of his blog, how could he possibly have considered this trying? Quote, I tried learning how to program PHP, but I never could get the hang of it, end quote. Programming can sometimes be difficult to master. So when one of my acquaintances made that statement, I was sincerely willing to help him out and answer whatever programming questions he had. I started out by asking him some very basic questions on where he got stuck and tried to introduce him to some of the simpler concepts of programming. Turns out that he didn't understand a single thing that I was talking about. When I asked him how he tried to learn how to program, he told me that he taught himself PHP by looking at some open source PHP code. What? You can't just learn a language by looking at some arbitrary code. Why didn't he pick up a book and start with the basics? How could he possibly call this trying to learn the language? So what does it mean to try? I can't even begin to tell you how many people I've encountered who claim to have tried something but never put out their best efforts. These people don't give their all, and when they get stuck, they immediately write things off. In fact, the people that complain the most are the ones who give up before even trying. They bitch and moan about external factors when in fact, they themselves are to blame for failing. So if trying is more than just going through the motions, what exactly does it mean to try? Trying is not quitting at the first obstacle. You can't really claim to have tried something until you've overcome at least a few major obstacles. Most people who don't try give up at the first sign of danger. They hit their first obstacle like a brick wall and then start making excuses. Trying is sticking with something even though you feel like total c Those who have read my story know that our online store didn't make very many sales during the first few months of operation and we contemplated closing up shop. 
No one could find our store online, and at the time, we had no answers on how to increase website traffic. But thankfully, we racked our brains and eventually found creative ways to attract business. Nothing is ever completely smooth. To try is to overcome. Trying takes time. Sometimes trying and succeeding simply takes time. Sometimes nothing you can do will accelerate progress and you just need to be patient. If you give up too early, you might miss out on potential gains that are right around the corner. With our online store, getting indexed in Google and waiting for our reputation to spread via word of mouth was simply a waiting game. Nothing we could have done could have sped things up. Persistence was the key. What's strange was that success came on like a switch towards the middle of our first year. All of a sudden, we were getting lots of organic traffic and business really took off. If we didn't stick around long enough, we would have missed out. Trying is waiting for things to sink in. When you are trying to learn something completely new and foreign, certain things may be difficult to comprehend at first glance. The human brain works in strange ways, and it sometimes requires time for concepts to sink in. If you give up before allowing things to settle in your brain, you are not giving yourself a fair chance. For example, when I first started looking at the source code for some of the open source shopping carts out there, my brain was completely frazzled. Reading and understanding someone else's code was not only difficult, but I could barely retain anything because there was too much information to absorb at one time. But I stuck with it, and over a period of several months, things gradually began to stick. No matter how smart you are, it still takes time to learn, absorb, and digest new things. Have I always tried? I always find it interesting to look back on some of the failed projects that I've worked on in the past. Sometimes I question whether I gave it my all. Sometimes I question whether I put my complete heart into it. Sometimes I wonder whether things would be different now if I simply tried again. If you have a free moment, you may want to take some time and reflect upon your past as well as revisit some old projects. Sometimes all it takes is a newfound perspective in order to revive an old passion. Who knows? It might be worth giving things another try. You just listened to the post titled, Your Business Failed, But Did You Really Try or Did You Just Give Up? by Steve Chu of MyWifeQuitHerJob.com. And thank you to Gusto. You know, instead of reading a script about Gusto's payroll and benefits, we wanted to tell you what small business owners are saying, the people who use Gusto every day. Here's what one business says. With Gusto, I think of payroll as a 30-second job. The website is so friendly and a joy to use. Friendly payroll? You don't hear that every day. Amy from Utah says, I love Gusto so much. They do our medical, dental, vision, and life insurance. It's so painless, it's like going to the spa. And we have great options and rates even though we're a super small team. Health insurance? Like going to the spa? Wow. And here's what Amneet says about Gusto's support team. Whenever something comes up, I reach out and literally 24 hours later, they tell us what to do or assure us that they've already handled it for us. Smart technology and friendly humans? Now that's cool. Honestly, the list goes on. And right now, our listeners get three months free when they go to gusto.com slash OSD. Yep, three months of payroll, benefits, admin, and more, totally free. Again, that's gusto.com slash OSD. G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OSD. And I also want to thank our author today, Steve Chu. When his wife became pregnant and she planned to stay home with the baby, they knew that they would need to find more income. So they started a little online store called Bumblebee Linens. In just one year, they were able to replace his wife's salary of 100K per year, and they started My Wife Quit Her Job to document all of it, including income reports. As of 2016, Steve said that he expected to have the website's first seven-figure year, which is obviously huge. But he didn't stop there. He started the My Wife Quit Her Job podcast and he even held his very first e-commerce conference called the Sellers Summit. So clearly he has accomplished a ton, and uh, we thank Steve for letting us share his work. And a reminder, you can come by mywifequitherjob.com for a lot more. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you back here tomorrow for the New Year's Eve episode. That's where your optimal life awaits.